I'm going to give everyone one last shot. If you did not read the thumbnail, go watch after the credits. This is your one shot. It is the most important after the credits scene in Attack on Titan history. Yes, a lot of people assumed it was, but there was still the uncertainty. That is indeed Aaron Yeager. This was such a painful thing in the manga. The manga was monthly, so the wait between chapters and the uncertainty is a lot more painful than it was in the anime where you get Aaron's voice actor who changes his voice, which he did a phenomenal job at aging four years, especially considering the almost emotionless glare that he had at the end of the prior season. This episode changes everything. To have our boy meet up with Reiner after using Falco to send letters to his family, as what he said, to then having Reiner, just when the festival's about to kick off, Willie's gonna make some speech that's gonna change everything. And you have Reiner just meet up with the person who, the last person he would ever want to see again. Who's chilling in a basement, one-legged, saying, hey, let's have a chat. That gave me chills. When I read it, it gave me chills, but Aaron's voice actor, who is, I honestly think, one of the most talented voice actors across the globe, and one of the best performances, especially when Aaron gets certain moments, such as four years have passed and Aaron seemingly is a little crazy right now. One of my favorite scenes was finally animated. Our boy is chilling, and we get someone named Jaeger, who comes over and pops up and talks, as a conversation happens and he goes insane before getting dragged away. Before having a conversation with Reiner, Aaron has a conversation with his grandpa who basically loses him. That is one of the best moments in Attack on Titan. Where you think it's a doctor, you think, oh, it's a, someone who's pretty, you know, he's in all in his head, he's having a conversation. But then as Aaron just is casually chit-chatting, he's saying, that sounds more like you're talking about yourself trying to get away before it's too late. And you're getting these flashbacks, you're like, wait, this seems very familiar to something we've seen when Aaron's father had his moment to shine in prior seasons, and then you realize and you connect the docs. Mr. Kruger is having a conversation with Mr. Jaeger, and it's all clicking in, it's all coming full circle. It's just, to think about Aaron having a casual conversation with Grandpa before then having a casual conversation with Reiner, both of which were mentally unstable, for different reasons, obviously, you know things are about to change. And yes, there won't be an episode next week, there will be an episode the following week, so it's technically a two-week break because usually there's a week break between episodes, but with next week having the New Year break, which almost every anime does, episode five is two weeks away. It's not the worst delay of all time. I mean, I remember waiting be like four years for season two after watching season one, so it's not anything to get too riled up about, but I mean, it's definitely... The moment I've been waiting for brings a grin to my face. MAPPA is so good at what they're doing with the adaptation. And something I really want to point out, it's pretty basic. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not even important. But there was a moment that a lot of people thought was cut last week. And it was Pete crawling because this is a character who's been in her Titan form for so long that she's now more used to walking on all fours rather than walking as a human. So to have a moment where, yes, you get the whole Peaks ass fan service, which people are like, oh, they cut that out, which is a funny joke because they're like, oh, the most important thing got cut out, the plot. But then you get it in this episode. So the way MAPPA's rearranging things, it definitely goes to show me that things that may not have happened in last week's episode or previous episodes definitely can be rearranged. And that's how it should happen. Just because Isayama wrote it in a certain way to flow chapter to chapter, he has a much different structure than an anime experience. Anime airs weekly, his chapters air monthly. There is supposed to be rearranging, there's supposed to be changes and cuts, and you know, it's that's the whole point of an adaptation. And I've firmly believed in Wits Vision and how Isayama has changed things with the prior season and at the request of Wits Studio. And I'm liking how Map is doing the same thing. That whole crawling sequence you didn't need, but it's a good thing to show that these characters who live so long in their titans can grow so accustomed to being more titan than human. It's a nice little differentiate between what makes someone human and a titan at the end of the day. And the idea of this episode, people may want to say, is slow. People will get hyped up because of the after the credit scene, for sure, don't get it mistaken. But people might say, oh, why are we still focusing on these other kids? What's the point? For now, a month of watching Attack on Titan, we've now grown accustomed to a side that we viewed as the enemy. We view them as the horrible people who came in episode one of season one to crash down a wall to watch Aaron's mother be eaten alive and to start this whole story of revenge. But what the past month of Attack on Titan has shown us is that at the end of the day, war, whichever side you fight for, is going to be the side that you believe in. For Aaron, 
His side's going to be the one in the right. They were trapped behind walls. The invaders came and kicked down their walls, destroyed their way of life. We're going off of what happened at the end of last season. If he's still in that thought process, he has to kill his enemies. But then again, Aaron's pretty peaceful right now. He's plenty of opportunities to blow up this entire operation, yet he's wanting to have a chat with Reiner. What does that mean? Maybe he's different. Maybe he has a different thought process. You don't know. But for so long now, we've been watching essentially what would have happened at the beginning of season one if we were at a different perspective. We easily could have been following Reiner as the main character for so long, and we could be viewing Aaron as the antagonist, right? To have a bunch of kids who are just trying to fight for their freedom and to try to change, yeah, they have a shitty situation. They have to wear armbands. They're treated as literal cattle. It's pretty damn horrible. It's essentially like concentration camps in a different coat of paint. But at the same time, that's their only chance of survival, or so they've been taught, right? They just want to be free. I mean, that whole sequence at the party where one kid spills his drink, he's literally expecting to get the noose. He's expecting to die, and if it wasn't for a very nice woman taking the blame, who knows what would have happened to him. This is not a good situation for Eldians. It's not, in the slightest. But we are also the kind of godlike perspective. We get to see everything. If you're raised in a certain way, knowing that if you go against Marley, if you go against the chain of command, you will die, you're very much going to want to follow their rules so you get to, at the very least, have your home, have your way of life, even if, you know, it's not the best thing. If they all knew that, you know, Paradise Island weren't, you know, eating the flesh of each other, and they actually didn't have to be fearful, they probably would all jump ship. But at the same time, you know, there's all these histories. Every The victors will always write the history books. For Marley, they look at what's happened back in the past and these devils and these titan shifters crushing their lands. And then you have the opposite. Like, everyone has skewed history to such a degree that you're left with just people trying to survive. And by dedicating a month of episodes, focusing in on characters who are new and old, seeing things from different perspectives, it allows you to see that war isn't black and white, that war is a brutal thing, and whichever side you fight for is going to seem like the best thing. And by putting us in their perspectives, it gets you to look at characters like Reiner, someone you've loved and hated and loved and hated, to someone who is so tragic who just wants to see the kids that he loves smile and go on another day and not have to suffer like him. The whole scene with Falco trying to overpass Gabby, and Gabby not understanding that Falco loves her, and Falco is just trying so he can be the burden, that he can bear the Titan curse so she can live a normal, healthy, long life, unlike Reiner, unlike himself, and unlike his brother, which the brother is supposed to be the new beast titan. It's so amazing to see what they're able to accomplish, and while reading the chapters monthly, I loved it, but to see it animated with the voice acting, I would honestly give the anime the edge in terms of some of these side characters surrounding Gabby and Falco, and in making them feel a lot more human and a lot more personal, and it really does get you connected with these characters. And the thing that I love about this arc of Attack on Titan is that you see so many horrible things and you see so many peaceful things. And it's all a matter of perspective. If you put yourself through Falco's perspective, you see things as this is our way of life. Here's a soldier who's trying to recover, wants to send letters to his family. He might know Reiner. I'm going to send him to him. And then you can look at things through Aaron's perspectives that these are the people. Wow, I blended in with these people. They, yeah, they're very similar to us. So what does that mean? Does Aaron look at these as normal people who deserve life, or does he look at it as what he has to do, right? There's so much uncertainty knowing what we've just experienced. And that conversation, everyone's going to have their theories. People are going to say it's going to end explosives. Some people are going to say it's going to end peaceful. Is Reiner going to switch sides, right? You don't exactly know. Reiner, the last time we saw Reiner really in his most depressed state, he was ready to put a bullet through his brain. What's he going to do when talking to Aaron? Does he want Aaron to kill him? Does he want to fight Aaron? What is going to happen? That's the beauty of Attack on Titan, is that this episode changes everything. And episode 5, you know, is only going to do the same. This was an incredible episode. Phenomenal directing. Voice actors knocked it out of the park. The sky's the limit going forward. I'd love to know everyone's theories and speculations down below. What did you think? And where do you think episode 5 is going to go if you haven't read the manga? The manga is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but let the anime onlys be able to speculate the same way we did when reading it month by month. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.